All right, so I will do it. Um, there's a basic formula that I'm going to be using. Let me just uh, write it down here so that I have access to it. Well, um, there are two basic formulas that I'll be using. So it has to do with how to relate um, heat transfer with the physical changes. So, um, so one of them is what you have already seen, that heat transfer is a specific capacity times mass times change of temperature. Okay, so, so there's that. And um, so this might be the heat transfer associated with the change of temperature. And we also cover something called the latent heat, either latent heat of fusion or latent heat of uh, vaporization. And those are heat transfers related to um, change of phase. So heat, there's a heat transfer related to change of phase, um, as in phase of matter. And uh, those we calculate a little bit differently because when the phase of matter changes, Temperature doesn't change, but there is a heat transfer. And we express it as, okay, the latent heat, whatever it is, material, and whether it's uh, um, solid to liquid or liquid to gas. So uh, latent heat of, or latent heat, either of fusion or vaporization, times the amount of mass. Um, so these are the ways that heat transfer will be related either to temperature change or um, or this. Now, it asks how much heat transfer is necessary to raise the temperature of the ice to this, including the energy needed for phase changes. Um, all right. It feels like I... All right, I guess I'll just build up the entire expression. I can do it in the... Um, I can do it in Ultram Alpha. So I, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to um, write these expressions for each step. So first, I need a specific heat capacity of ice because it starts at ice at relatively cold temperature. So let me get specific heat capacity of ice 2090. Um, joule, uh, joule per kilogram times degree C, the specific capacity of ice times the mass of ice, 0 0.22 kilogram, times the change of temperature. It's starting at minus 26 degrees C, it's going to go up to zero, so it'll be a total change of 26 degrees C. Okay, that's a stage one, and then we have to um, we have to change ice into water. So there I need to look up a different constant that's in section 1.5. We have latent heat of fusion or uh, water, latent heat of fusion. So this, 334. Uh, watch out for the units. Here, I'm going to type in the units and let Ufram Alpha do the unit conversion for me. 334 kilojoule per kilogram times still 0 0.22 kilogram of um, ice turning into water. And now we need um, water going from 0 degrees to 100 degrees C before it's ready to turn into a water vapor. So it's going to be plus, uh, I need a specific capacity again of water, 4186 joule per uh, kilogram times the degrees of C times mass, 0 0.22 kilogram again times um, change of temperature, 100 degrees C. Uh, okay, that's uh, the third stage of water getting to the boiling point. And then now water is going to boil. There's a latent heat of fusion of, uh, sorry, latent heat of uh, vaporization of water, uh, 2256 uh, kilojoule per kilogram. So I need 2256 uh, kilojoule per kilogram times same mass, 0 0.22 kilogram, 
Okay, now all the water is water vapor. I'm not done yet. <laughs> I need to turn, raise its temperature to 132 degrees C. I think I have a specific heat capacity of uh, water vapor somewhere. Steam. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, so let me use, I hope a 1152 is, 1520 is right. Um, so I have plus 1520, a joule per kilogram times the degrees of C. Uh, times 0 0.2 kilogram times and the temperature change was 32 degrees C since it's going from 100 to 132 32 degrees C. All right, uh, let's see how that works out. Uh, it's quite complicated expression, so it might not. Well, looks fine for me. Um, I think it got everything. Okay, 685 kilojoule is what it's saying. Let's just to make sure that that's correct. Feels about right, um, but okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, uh, the most challenging thing is you have to remember every uh, processor that's there. Although I guess the part to be kind of... Um, Hard right, to be um, tells you. So for purpose, I think this is really the reason I want you to do this, do this question because um, you have to convert the information you have into uh, what they are looking for, seconds of time. So um, at each stage, you have some amount of heat. And what they are wanting you to do is given this heat and given this uh, transfer rate, how much time does it take? And I hope as you look at the unit and think through this, that it makes sense that if you take the amount of heat that you need to transfer and divide it by the rate of transfer, kilojoule per second, then the resulting answer that you get here is going to be in unit of second. And, and that's the correct answer. So, so let me do that. I copied this, uh, expression here so that I can uh, break it out into each individual stage. And basically what I'm going to do is divide it by 18 kilojoule per second. And it'll give me something in seconds. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, Kel oh, I guess uh, Wolfram Alpha is very conservative. They are not treating Kelvin the same as the Kelvin difference, which is fine. I, I can look at it and know that, oh, it's meant to be 0 0.66 for seconds, not nothing complicated. All right, uh, I need to replace this um, with the next stage. So I'm, go I'm going to delete most of it, just leave off the one stage that uh, I'm concerned with the uh, ice melting. Oh, wait, yeah, I shouldn't type in S there. What am I doing? Uh, okay, 4.08 seconds. Okay, um, ice melting, I guess, takes longer than it rate rising in temperature. Heat up the water to the boiling point. That's my uh, third part. Let me just paste in the whole thing and see which part. I think, yeah, 100 degrees. This is the water heating up. Five point one two seconds. Okay, decent, comparable. And part of the, this is a kind of a number sense question. I hope um, when you see how big part D is, that that you are not surprised. This is a kind of the thing about both the um, heat of vaporization and uh, the kind of property of water is that it's really big. Uh, so the, all these heat uh, coefficients relating to water are big. And uh, heat of vaporization of water is actually pretty big. Uh, I guess that's why it's uh, useful for things like coolant and whatnot. Um, okay, I got one last thing remaining here. Uh, oh, yeah, forgot about that. Okay, I, this last step is uh, heating up the steam to the final temp given temperature. Uh, so yeah, that takes barely any time, 0 0.594. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, um, 
<laughs> so yeah, this one takes a bit of work, I guess. Uh, you can't uh, use Wolfram Alpha to bypass everything. 